Hello everybody and welcome to Ancient Architects. Please subscribe now to get the latest ancient history news and independent research from around the world. This week I was shown a picture by David Hanrahan on Twitter and I had to admit I'd never seen it before. On this channel I mainly discuss structures we're already aware of but David often posts about hidden gems of the ancient world and this structure is exactly that. At first glance I saw a flying saucer on a launch pad with four pyramid pylons or obelisks and before the writers of Ancient Aliens get all excited and start making notes please watch the video to the end. This structure is known as the tomb of Lars Porsena who was an Etruscan king who is believed to have built this incredible structure in 500 BC at Clusium located in modern day Tuscany in central Italy. Now if ever a structure could be called an ancient wonder this one certainly fits the bill and as you'll see in this video the artist's impressions of the structure all vary. I'll explain why shortly. Some sources say that when it was built it was 200 meters in height. That's 656 feet which is nearly 200 feet taller than the Great Pyramid of Egypt. But this huge size cannot be corroborated and it could well be a detail that was made up by the antiquarians of history. Furthermore the design was seemingly so complex and impossible and it also had a labyrinth at the base that was equal in complexity to the great labyrinth of Egypt. So why isn't this structure more widely known about? Well that is a good question and there are probably two reasons. Number one some say it didn't exist in the way described and two because Roman general Cornelius Sulla supposedly destroyed the structure in 89 BC. There is only one specific Roman account of the tomb and that was written by Marcus Varro which is quoted by Pliny the Elder. Varro lived between 116 and 27 BC and concerning the tomb of Porsena he says the following. Porsena was buried below the city of Clusium in the place where he had built a square monument of dressed stone. Each side was 300 feet in length and 50 feet in height and beneath the base there was an inextricable labyrinth into which if anyone entered without a ball of thread he could never discover his way out. To put that into perspective the base of the Great Pyramid of Egypt is around 755 feet square meaning the tomb of Lars Porsena did have a smaller footprint which is less than half the size but according to some sources it did have a much larger height. Pharaoh continues, above the square building there stand five pyramids, one at each corner and one in the center, 75 feet or 22 meters broad at the base and 150 feet or 44 meters high. These pyramids so taper in shape that upon the top of them together there is supported a bronze globe and upon that a potassus from which bells are suspended by chains. For reference a potassus was like a sun hat or helmet and was worn by the ancient Greeks, Thracians and Etruscans. With wings added it became the symbol of Hermes. This coin shows Hermes wearing a potassus and comes from around 400 BC. Varro continues, these make a tinkling sound when blown about by the wind. Upon this globe there are four more pyramids, each 100 feet or 30 meters in height and above them is a platform on which there are five more pyramids. Well that description does sound as impossible as it does spectacular and many historians do believe that Varro grossly exaggerated his account whilst others believe it's a complete fabrication. Here is an artist's impression by George Badger from 1646 which isn't exactly like the description given but it does give us an idea. So many sketches have been drawn over the years and all of them differ but that's because there is only one description and so we do have some artistic license. This artist's impression is from 1792 but again it does vary on some details but it does give us another idea this being the brainchild of Jean-Jacques Lequeu. As you can see it doesn't really look structurally sound which is probably why so many believe that Varro was exaggerating. 
but saying that, if it did exist, I guess we don't know the materials used and also the methods of construction. James Ferguson wrote a study on the structure in 1885, and he says the dimensions of the structure all seem to be based on the cubit measurement. The base is 200 cubits, aka 300 feet, and some of the angular pyramids are 100 cubits in height, but he believed the amount of detail in the description does make it believable and authentic. He says that Etruscan traditions would not have attached themselves to Porsena's tomb if it wasn't a truly wonderful and exceptional building. Yes, the size is incredible for the day, but the actual design, with a square base of pyramid-like columns, wasn't actually out of the ordinary, as shown by the Tomb of Arons. Pliny the Elder included Varro's description in his work, but because it didn't exist in his time, because he couldn't see it himself, and because he couldn't fathom how such a structure could stand, how it could be built and so on, he dismissed the whole account as fable. But he does say there are Etruscan stories that say there was a top pyramid on the structure that was equal in size compared to the rest of the structure below. Therefore, if there is a written account, as well as other Etruscan stories, should we be taking it more seriously? As Varro says, Porsena's tomb also contained a labyrinth, and Pliny did give mention when discussing the four great labyrinths of the world. He could not say whether or not it truly existed, but says the whole project would have surely been an insane folly that would have benefited no one and exhausted the resources of a kingdom. Following Pliny, most antiquarians and historians do dismiss the structure, and that's all because of the seemingly impossible description by Varro, a structurally unsound construction beyond the bounds of reality. But in an ancient world of ego-driven rulers, should we really dismiss the claim so quickly? Who are we to say what was impossible in days gone by, when we still struggle to understand the well-studied ancient structures of Peru and Egypt? Lars Porsena was a very powerful man, a fierce ruler and he did have big ambition. Around 508 BC, he was a king who waged war on the city of Rome, but was apparently so impressed by the acts of Roman bravery in defending the city that he actually chose to make peace. Some accounts say that Porsena was partially successful. It's likely that a treaty was made between Porsena and Rome, and by all accounts we do know that Porsena was not defeated, and the two kingdoms did make peace. To understand if such a tomb was even possible, does require a deep understanding of ancient architecture, and a fantastic lecture by Erika Naginski, available on YouTube and linked below, is a really good way to get some background. We think it's impossible because Pliny couldn't fathom the description, but how would he visualise a description of, say, the Sagrada Familia in Barcelona if he read one today? Also, do we actually see similarities between the description of the Tomb of Porsena and the design of some of the cathedrals of the world? Furthermore, what if it was built on a natural hill, harnessing the natural topography? Maybe the description isn't exact, maybe a number of key details are left out, and maybe it sounds more incredible than it was, but I don't think we should dismiss its existence. Lars Porsena did exist and he was a powerful man, and he would have had a tomb that's fit for a king, a tomb that's not been found by archaeologists to this day. We really can't say a great deal more about the tomb of Porsena, except to say there is a labyrinth of tunnels below the historic centre of Chiusi, in the province of Siena in Tuscany. Some say this is the labyrinth of Porsena, but others say it's just a system of tunnels and cisterns, all to do with the ancient city's water supply. This system of tunnels, passages and basins does go back to the Etruscan era and the passages are 1 metre wide and 2 to 5 metres high, dug into the natural sandstone and go down around 25 metres into the ground. Cisterns and small basins are clear to see and even if this wasn't the labyrinth, it does show the Etruscans would have been able to build one. 
A later tunnel connects to a larger Etruscan Roman cistern from the 1st century BC, which is covered by a large double vault and supported by a large central pillar. In the 12th century, a defence tower was built above it, which then became the bell tower of the cathedral. Only yesterday, Phil from the channel Ancient Alternative View also made a video on the tomb of Lars Porsena, but he explores the possibility that it wasn't a tomb at all, or that it was something way more, and that it did in fact have a function that involved catching lightning. If you want to find out more, I'll leave a link to Phil's video in the description below. But theory aside, with the current knowledge we still can't confirm or deny the existence of the tomb of Porsena. But to picture it, a structure with a footprint less than half the size of the Great Pyramid, but still 200 feet taller, well it would have been a true lost ancient wonder of the world, and one we can only imagine today. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Ancient Architects. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel, please like the video, and please leave a comment below. Thank you very much.